Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Father of the effortless English system that trains you, teaches you. You speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you join, when you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there. Join. Commit. Don't quit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Calm. The topic today is about improvement, improving, making big improvements. And how do we make these big improvements? Big improvements to your English, of course. You're learning English, so I know you want to improve quickly. I know you want to make big improvements because, you know, honestly, big improvements are more fun. It's more fun, right? A lot of people talk about motivation and how do I become more motivated? AJ, I'm not motivated. But I think a lot of the time, the reason we lose motivation is we feel like we feel we're not improving. We're not improving enough. Right? And then we become frustrated and we lose motivation. And there are two answers to this to solve this problem. I mean, answer number one, probably the best one I have talked about is to love just doing it, just to love it, just to enjoy it completely, enjoy reading, enjoy listening, watching movies, whatever, just enjoying. And then you're not so focused on improving, you know, every week. You're not stressed about it. And the improvement will happen naturally. But meanwhile, meanwhile, you are enjoying, enjoying, enjoying all of your time with English, or anything else you want to improve. So that's number one. That's number one. Now, number two, the other way, <laughs> which you, we can do both, but the other solution to this for low motivation is to really feel you are improving a lot because that just becomes exciting, right? When we have a goal, we have something we want to improve, we want to do, we feel ourselves getting better and better fairly quickly, we can feel the improvement, you know, each week, then we also, we usually will get more motivated because now uh, we're, we're like excited. Yes, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. It's working. What I'm doing is working. And that's another way to improve your motivation a lot. Of course, if you can do both, it's, that's the best of all. Enjoy what you're doing a lot and also making good improvements, feel the improvement, and then you're going to be super powerful, super motivated, etc. So we're live on YouTube today. Just good to see everyone saying hi and hello. I'll come back and answer questions and comments as usual, but let's just talk about the topic a little more, and then I'll come back to your live comments and questions. So how to improve, how to make big improvements. I think that, you know, in many ways, you know, thinking of English or many skills, many skills we want to improve that require uh, time, a lot of effort. You know, you can't just do it very quickly. It's not easy. I think it's very similar to training for a marathon. It's a nice analogy, a nice metaphor I have used many times because it's kind of the same idea. If you are, let's say, for example, someone who is fat, lazy, weak, you've never, you've never run before, you've never even jogged, even walking is difficult for you because you're so fat and unhealthy. How would you run a marathon? Let's say you want to, your goal becomes, I want to run a marathon under four hours. That's a nice goal for a first marathon. I want to run a marathon in under four hours. But right now, you're fat and weak. You've never jogged. You can't even walk more than 10 minutes. So the idea of suddenly running a marathon seems impossible. 
to someone like that. Someone like that, it seems impossible. Even some people who are not fat, some people who can jog, who can go for a run even, but maybe they only running like 5K, three miles. And even then, a marathon can seem really, 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 really far away. Very, 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 very difficult, very big for someone who only does little short runs. So imagine for someone who's fat, so who's someone who can't even walk, who has a, like 50 extra kilograms, kilo, kilos or more. It must seem completely impossible. So what do you do? How do you gain the motivation? Because the problem is this. If that person, the fat person, if they focus too much on the marathon, right? I'm going to run a marathon. This is what some people say for goal setting, that you should focus on this goal and imagine the goal and dream about it. You know, the secret, that book, The Secret. That works some, but there is a problem. If the goal is really big, if the goal seems huge, if the goal seems very, very difficult, if the goal seems very far away, that can actually hurt your motivation. It can kill your motivation. It seems impossible. So the fat person thinking about running a marathon, that might not motivate them. It might do the opposite. It might make them feel like, Ah, there's no way. There's no way I can do this. You know, they, you can try to imagine it. I'll run a marathon, run a marathon. But it seems impossible to them. It seems it's too much. It's too, too, too far away. It actually will make them feel hopeless. Okay? And this can feel the same for language. If you imagine speaking perfectly like a native speaker, it might feel so far that actually thinking about that makes you feel less motivated. So you have to be careful with these goals, especially these very big ones. There's a better way to do it. How do you train for your first marathon? Now, for later marathons, you can do, there's lots of complicated things you can do if you want to, to run faster, you know, if you're experienced. But for your very first marathon, the best program, the one I use for my, actually for all my marathons, is simple, 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 simple. It's making little improvements every week. That's all you do. You just focus on doing a little more every week. That's all. And what's great about this way, this focus, this goal, it seems achievable. It seems easy, even for someone who is just starting. Even for someone who's very, very weak, just a super beginner, far, far, far away from the goal. You don't think about the big goal too much. Of course, you know it's there, but you don't think about it. So how do you do it? So here's exactly how I train for the marathon. I would run four days a week. Monday, oh, actually it was Tuesday. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I ran four days a week. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I only did three miles. That's 5K. That's all. For the whole time, let's say six months preparing for the marathon, on Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday, I never ran more than three miles, 5K. Number two, I did it slowly. All my runs, every run was slow. In fact, I took walking breaks. Maybe every mile, about every 10 minutes, uh, 12 minutes, I would walk for maybe a minute. So very, very relaxed way of training. So how did I do it then? You know, I'm running only three miles those days. How did I prepare to run 26 miles under four hours? Well, the key is the one other day, the Sunday. The Sunday, which is called your long day, long, slow day. Runners call this LSD. Also the slang for a drug, but this is runners have a different meaning. Long, slow day. Long is the important part. Long, slow day. Once a week, only once a week, you do a long run. How long? How long? Well, it depends on your fitness now. It depends on your starting point. 
So let's imagine the fat person, the fat person, very fat. So they, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they would do, they would start only walking. They wouldn't even be able to run. So they only start walking. Maybe they only can walk 10 minutes. I don't know. It depends on them. But basically they do short, slow walks on Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday. On Sunday, they go just a little bit longer. So imagine they can walk 10 minutes. So Sunday, they add five minutes. They walk 15 minutes. Only on Sunday, 15 minutes. Week two, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, still just walking a little bit, maybe just 10 minutes again. But the next Sunday, Sunday number two, they add five more minutes. Now, 20 minutes they walk, right? It's just this one day of adding a little bit. So each week, they're only adding about five minutes. Each week, they're adding five minutes of walking. That's all. That's all. It's very gradual, and anyone can do this. Anyone. Now, what's great about this is that, you know, eventually their fitness will improve and they can go a little longer during the week. So Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they can finally increase that to 15 minutes and then 20 minutes. But every Sunday keeps getting longer and longer and longer. Of course, eventually, maybe after a few months, this fat person will lose weight. They get better fitness and finally they can start to jog very slowly, right? Not really running, but kind of half walking, half running. In between, we call jogging. So slow jogging. They can finally change to slow jogging. Maybe they just keep the distance the same for a while, but they now are going a little faster. They're slow jogging. They do that for a couple months. And then what do they do? Then they start the real marathon training, doing what I did. So Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday, they would jog for three miles, 30 minutes. You can do it by time. You don't have to do distance. You can just do by time. So 30 minutes on Tuesday, 30 minutes on Thursday, 30 minutes Saturday. And then what? On Sunday, the long day. The first Sunday, now they're jogging. They're not walking anymore. So now they're going faster. The first Sunday, they jog for what? Now you're going to increase 10 minutes every week. So 40 minutes, 4-0. Four 40 minutes on Sunday. Sunday number two, 50 minutes. Sunday number three, 60 minutes. You see, right? Sunday number four, 70 minutes, 80 minutes, 90 minutes, and it just goes up. 10 minutes adding every week, adding 10 more minutes. Very, very gradual. Very gradual. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But guess what happens? Number one, they're improving every week. This is why it's motivating. The improvement does not have to be huge, but they notice. They notice. I noticed. You will notice. Every Sunday, you're running longer. Every single Sunday, which means every week, you're going longer. So you know you're improving. You're like, I improved again. Next week, I improved again. Next week, I improved again. This is very motivating. You're like, this is great. I'm definitely improving. It's not huge every week, but guess what? After three months, it is a big improvement. After three months, now you're, you've increased by two hours. After three months, you're doing half marathons already. And by six months, or if you're really fat, maybe you need nine months, or maybe you need a year, it doesn't matter. But after six to 12 months, you are now every Sunday running, jogging a marathon, a full marathon, 26 miles, four hours. And the other days can, are still short. But this is a very powerful feeling. And you start to realize very quickly when you do this method of just a little bit each week, the motivation gets bigger and bigger. And you start to see the improvement more and more and more and more like a snowball, right? We have this image of a snowball at the top of a, a hill and it starts rolling down and it gets bigger, 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 faster, 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 faster. This is the feeling. This is how it feels emotionally each week when you do this. However, each week the improvement is not so difficult. You're not torturing yourself. It's not painful. 
just 10 extra minutes, it's not that bad. It's not bad. It's Maybe you feel a little bit more tired, but it's only 10 more minutes per week. So it actually feels fairly easy. And yet, as I said, after a couple months, your long run is now quite long already. After three months, your long run is half marathon. Probably it's a half marathon already after three months. So it's actually a very fast improvement, but each week it feels very small. And this is good psychology. It's a kind of a psychological trick. Instead of forcing yourself to make a big change in one week and then, ah, oh, you feel stress, you make a little change, a little change, a little change, a little change, and it adds up. And wow, in three months, in five months, in four months, your improvement is huge, big, very, very big. So that's for marathon training. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm going to suggest to you, do this for our challenge, our reading challenge or and or the listening challenge. You can do the same. Now, some of you might want to make a big change. In the first week, you're going to listen to three or four or five more hours every day. You're going to make a big jump, a big improvement suddenly. If you can do that, it's okay. But if that feels stressful, I recommend start the challenge doing your normal amount, right? Week number one, if you listen one hour per day right now, continue to listen one hour per day for, for week number one. But then number two, week number two, increase each day by 10 minutes, 70 minutes, right? Week number three, 80 minutes, 90 minutes. You see, right? Every week increase by 10 minutes per day. Well, at the end of four months, the challenge is four months long. You all have increased your daily listening quite a lot, quite a lot, right? You'll be up to, let's see, well, let's see if we have, how many weeks would that be? 16 weeks, right? about 16 weeks, so it's 160 minutes, not bad, right? It's over, you will have increased by more than two hours per day. Possibly, you'll be up to three hours a day or more. And if you start feeling confident and it's getting easier, you could increase 15 minutes every week, right? Increase your daily listening by 15 minutes per week or increase your daily listening by 20 minutes per week. Not too much though. If you feeling too, if you feel stress about it, reduce the amount, but still improve every week. That's the key thing. Some kind of improvement. It could be 10 minutes. It could be 20 minutes. It could be 30 minutes per week. It's up to you, your choice, but not too big so it's not stressful. But then over time, it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. At the end of our challenge, you will make a huge, big, big improvement to your English. You can do this with any skill you're trying to learn. All right, let's go to our questions and comments, shall we? All right. Yeah, right, exactly. Preeti says, we're always thinking that our improvement is not enough, not enough, not, not enough. We lose our enthusiasm towards the learning of English. Why do we do so? Because you're too focused on, this is school training. You're too focused on some kind of goal that, you know, some, some performance, and you're not enjoying it enough. You're not enjoying it enough. I've done this too, okay? I understand it. And it's a big problem, and I have had the same problem. If I focus too much on my performance, it doesn't matter if it's language or something else, that the fun, the enjoyment disappears, and then I'm just always worried. Am I getting better? Am I, am I good enough? Uh, and then it destroys the fun. You know, just imagine a musician. If you're learning to play the guitar, okay? Yeah, you want to get better. But if, you, if playing the guitar becomes stressful, 
You're always so worried about your performance. Am I good enough? Am I good enough? You'll start to hate the guitar. The guitar won't be fun anymore. Pe people who are good guitarists, you know, th who become good guitarists, they love music. They love playing songs. They love learning new songs. They're more focused on the music and learning new songs and enjoying it. And yes, they automatically get better with time. But they're not constantly, oh, I've got to get better this week. I've got to be better and getting all stressed about it. Okay, and it's the same with English. You've got to enjoy it more. This is why I like the idea of time as a goal instead of your performance. See, in school, you get stressed out, right? They t give you a test and you have to perform and get a grade or take the TOEFL or the TOEIC and it's all so stressful. It's kind of like, you know, again, like with marathon training. When you're training, you don't care about time. Now, for advanced people, it may be different. But when you're trying to do your first marathon under four hours, like I never focused on my time. I never timed myself when I trained. Right? I didn't care like how many, how many minutes to run one mile. I didn't even, I don't know. Now, I did. Luckily, you know, following this system, I still ran under four hours. I achieved my goal. Just by going longer and longer and longer every week, I automatically got faster. My body got stronger and I had more endurance. I automatically was running faster each month, even though I was not trying to. I was not trying to run faster, but just my performance got better automatically. I focused just on the time. Just do more time. Just run more, run more, run more. And when you run more, you do get faster. <laughs> okay? It's the same idea with English. Just focus on the time of listening and reading. Just listen more, listen more, listen more. And guess what? You will get better. You will get better. You don't need to focus on the getting better. You don't need to focus on your performance. You don't need to get stressed about it. It's going to happen automatically. All you need to do is just do more, do more, do more, more and more listening and more and more reading. That's all. It's very low stress and it works. Bufendra says, sometimes low motivation can cause a sleepy mind while listening to a podcast. You know, play games. You've got to make it interesting. This is especially true something you're repeating a lot, right? So we've got two problems. We've got new things. And the problem with the new things, they sometimes they're hard to understand. They're difficult. We've never heard them before. So that's a challenge. And then the other thing is something we're repeating a lot. But that can be a challenge because we get bored with it. Oh, I'm repeating this. This number, I'm repeating it 50 times or 70 times or 100 times. When you're repeating something a lot, you've got to play games. You've got to make it a challenge, a little game. This is why I like shadowing. It forces my brain to concentrate. I'm trying to speak along with the speaker. And sometimes it's very hard because the audio is very fast. Uh, I'm still not sure about all the words. So I'm kind of, blah, 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 you know, and my... It, it sometimes is terrible. <laughs> I sound terrible. But even when I sound terrible, the good thing is it's really focusing my concentration. I have, if I am trying to do shadowing, I have to concentrate. If I lose my concentration just one second, it's gone and I can't do it. So I like it because it's a kind of a game I'm playing with my brain. It keeps it interesting to me. This is also a good reason to focus on pronunciation sometimes, especially with audios that you are repeating a lot. So like if you're using my lessons, like the VIP lessons, or, or of course the pronunciation course. In the beginning, maybe you just focus on understanding the meaning, the vocab, the grammar, whatever. But eventually, you understand it easily. And you want to repeat more. So now focus on shadowing. Focus on the pronunciation. Try to match. Try to copy the pronunciation exactly. You're creating a new game for your brain, a new challenge that's difficult. So now this audio, it used to seem really easy. Now you have a new challenge. Now it's not so easy anymore. Your motivation will go up. Your brain has a challenge, like a, like a problem to solve. So you can jump around doing different 
activities with the same audio. Sleepy says, what about super motivated people like VIPs or Effortless English members? How can they keep their state of enthusiasm stable? Cleefy, I think, you know, the good thing is those people have learned to enjoy it. And so you just, the main thing is you find content, you know, videos and audios that you enjoy. That's the key thing. Because once you enjoy it, once you're listening to things you really like, it could be audiobooks, it might be TV shows, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And reading interesting things that you enjoy, then you don't need motivation so much because now you're into it. Now it's just fun and you're not so focused about the improvement. You know the improvement will automatically happen. You're just enjoying it so much. It's the same thing, like I say all the time, Cleefy. You know, people who are, let's say people who exercise a lot, you know, they, they're really into fitness. They don't need to work hard to keep their motivation. It's not hard for them anymore. Like, like for me, it's not hard for me to exercise anymore. It's not hard. It's easy. It's easy because I like it. I really like it. I miss it. If I don't do it for a few days, then I feel bad and I get really motivated to do it because I enjoy it. You know, so at minimum, I have to walk. I need to go walking every day a lot. Otherwise, I get kind of uh, restless and unhappy. <laughs> so it's the same idea. Once you really love English, if you miss a few days, you're going to start feeling kind of unhappy. Ah, I want to read more English. I got to find more English. So you won't need to, to push yourself so much. It's the same. People who love lifting weights in the gym, they love it. So they don't need motivation so much anymore. It's the people, it's more the beginning. The people, when you're not loving it, that's when you need the motivation. Yeah, like Zuzlina says, uh, this is what it was like with my singing. I was burnt out because of this and blocked for one year. Exactly. It's the same for like, like you said, you know, as singers and musicians, of course, there's technique involved, right? Guitarists have, you know, they want to have good technique. They want to get faster, play more difficult songs. Singers, there's a lot of technique involved to be able to control your voice better. And that's good. Of course, you want to improve that. But sometimes if you focus too much on that, you will destroy your enjoyment because after all, you want to enjoy singing. So it's also important to just sing songs that you like. Just enjoy singing those songs that you really enjoy, even if they're not difficult, even if you're not practicing some difficult technique where you're, ah, 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 right? You can just do sing an easy song because you enjoy it and it, you love it. You love the song. It makes you feel good. So just enjoy singing and let, it feels good. You're, you're learning music and the guitar. Learn some easy songs and just enjoy playing the songs. And then, yes, then sometimes try something more difficult and it's a little fun challenge. But don't get too focused on performance because you just stress yourself out. You got to go back and forth. You push yourself a little bit. The challenge is fun. If the challenge gets too much, you start feeling stressed, go back and just enjoy. And you can kind of do both and mix them. As I said, also, with I do the same with fitness. So many times I'm doing very, you know, what for me, what is very easy fitness. I'm doing kind of, you know, push-ups a few times a week and pull-ups and uh, go for long walks. All that's really easy for me. And then occasionally I get bored with that. And then I know it's time for something more difficult. I need a challenge. I need something to challenge me. And that's when I plan some trip or some race or some kind of physical challenge that will push me to do more. So then I've got to really train. And this makes it more fun and interesting to me. But I also know if I do that too much, if I'm always focused on a race or an event, then I get burned out right? Then I lose motivation because I get tired of always, uh, oh, try to go faster, try to go longer. Too much of that, then I stop enjoying it. it. The enjoyment becomes less. It becomes too stressful. And that's when I take a break, 
no challenges. I just kind of relax and enjoy walking every day and doing some exercise. And I don't care too much about the performance. I'm just enjoying it. And again, I just go back and forth between these two things. And overall, I keep a nice fitness level. And that's a good way to do it. Oh, Lisa says, uh, our challenge will be a bit bigger for me. I will be working in Germany for two weeks from the 1st of August. I'll definitely integrate English reading and listening into my day. Yep, just do your best. And that's just the beginning. So it's the first two weeks. So th do what you can. You know, of course, we all have these kind of things happen. But then, you know, Lisa, you're going to go back home after that. And then you can increase. So you just start. Do as the best you can in Germany, and then you can increase more. The good news is a lot of Germans speak pretty good English, so you can probably even talk to some people. Dalal says, also, people staring at their phones all day causes laziness. Yeah, it creates a passive mindset. And the desire to rest all day without enjoying going outdoors. Yeah, get outdoors. That helps, too. Moving around helps a lot. Like, as I've said, you know, when I'm the other thing I'm doing now, because I'm doing Japanese and I'm doing I'm, I'm doing everything I'm telling you. I'm doing the same in Japanese now. And Japanese is new for me. I'm beginner, low beginner. And so it's quite frustrating. I don't understand much. So I've got to I have to concentrate on everything. Right. I can't kind of relax and just listen a little bit even easy material, if I'm not concentrating, it's just I'm not understanding anything. But this makes my brain tired. So what I do is I do, I walk around. I can't really just sit and do it very much. I find sitting and listening to Japanese makes very quickly, uh, so I'm even in my little apartment, I just walking around in a circle in my apartment <laughs> all the time while I'm listening. Like I got to be standing up moving. Namaz, ah, learned Russian. Language this thing always needs a huge improvement. In my experience, I learned Russian, and for six months I did nothing, though I thought I learned it over. Then I understood it improved a lot. Yeah, this, so this happens, right? You feel like nothing's happening, nothing's happening. It's very frustrating. You know, I talked about, I don't know, a few days ago, I talked about my kite surfing experience where I was, you know, in the water. <laughs> Every week I go to my lesson, and it seemed like nothing's happening. Right. I just crash, 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 crash. Can't stand up on the board. Can't stand up. Can't stand up. It was very frustrating. You know, after 12 weeks of that, 12 lessons, something like that with it felt like zero progress. It felt like nothing. But something was happening. I, you know, actually unconsciously something was happening because suddenly I got a new coach and in one lesson I stood up. Not long, but I stood up and I was like, ah, so I was actually even during all the crashing all the time, failing, failing. Somehow my brain and my body were learning something. I was learning a little bit about controlling the kite. I was learning a little bit about the wind. I was learning a little bit about trying to stand up on the board and it all with a little bit of uh, different coaching. It suddenly clicked, right? It suddenly it's just started working seemed like it happened suddenly like, like one day I can't do anything nothing and then suddenly one day boom I'm standing up and riding of course it was even during all the failure something was happening but I didn't realize it I just didn't realize I was learning then but it felt like I wasn't Amir Gohari says, should we try to memorize every single unknown word during reading and listening? No, 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 no. That'll make you stressed out. Uh, it's impossible, too. You're not going to remember everything. I, you know, I, it's nice to review. Like sometimes I read and listen and I'll just click, you know, on an ebook. I'll click very fast to see the meaning and keep going. And of course, I forget it. And then, but I'll do it again and do it again. And they start to stick a little by little. But no, nah, don't try to stress yourself out because you're going to forget.
Ah, well, this is Emmanuel Esposito with a challenging question. How do we find a balance between work and studying English? It's difficult to keep up working and studying at the same time. Well, yeah, it's going to be different for everybody. You know, we all have different kinds of jobs, so it depends how much time and effort you need for your job. And, you know, you also have things like, you know, for me, I've got two new babies. <laughs> so this is my challenge of trying to uh, deal with these two new babies at the same time. Still doing effortless English, still trying to do some exercise so I stay in good fitness. So we do, we have to balance. This is one reason I'm focusing on listening more because reading is hard for me to do right now. First of all, reading in Japanese is very hard. But the second reason is that uh, reading, I, I need quiet. You know, I, need to be able, I have to sit down and concentrate. So if the babies are crying, if I have to take care of the babies, right, changing the diaper, feed, making food for them, I can't be reading. I, I have to look. I need my eyes to do, see what I'm doing. But I can listen. I can listen during all of these things. I can listen while I'm making food. I can listen while I'm changing a diaper, right? So that's why, you know, one, one, one of the nice advantages of listening is you can do it as you do other things, some other things. So this might be something you could maybe do, Emmanuel, is that maybe focus more on listening. If you're really busy with some things like this, the other thing is you try to get little pieces of time when you can. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whenever you have a little time, a little break, use it for English. Yeah, like In says, since 2017, I started listening to English with Power English, which is my course. I was listening every day, one hour. But now I can't get enough of English. I listen to you and other listening materials all day long. Right. It's like the marathon training, okay? When you first start, maybe it's one hour feels like a lot. But then as you just keep increasing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and soon you're listening all day. Soon you're listening hours and hours every day. That's fantastic. Just like the marathon runner. In the beginning, you're jogging slowly. You can only do 5K, maybe less. You feel, oh, man, I'm so weak. Six months later, you're running a marathon, right? And then after that, you're always a marathon runner. You know you can always do it if you need to or if you want to. Okay, well, you guys are typing quickly again. Oh, that's nice. Evgeny with a, a Bulgarian saying, so translated to English, try combining the useful with pleasure. Watch a favorite movie with English audio and subtitles. For example, The Matrix. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Combine usefulness or what you're, you know, challenging yourself, learning with pleasure, with enjoyment. Maybe is even a better word. Exactly. Exactly. Larkson says the best, joking, I believe, but best is to quit your job for four months. If you can do it, <laughs> you could. Thanks, Rodrigo. Yeah, Mikhail, you're right about this. Mikhail Zernoff says, AJ, think that while you're learning Japanese, it'll give you a young and fresh mind. It'll bring us a huge amount of interesting topics. It, it will because I'm... You know, I'm in your position. Uh, as I, I'm really, I'm, I'm lower level than all of you. You all are, you are all higher level in English than I am for Japanese. I'm just starting, just starting. Like uh, I'm counting my hours. I have this app. Uh, it's not here. And I'm using an app called Ten Thousand Plus. Ten Thousand Plus. So that's one, and then four zeros. Ten thousand. The number ten thousand, and then the plus sign. There are other apps like this, but I like this one. And the idea is 10,000 hours. Is The idea of the app is that to become an expert, to become super, super good at anything, you need 10,000 hours. This is based on a book by uh, Malcolm Gladwell. 
I don't think you need 10,000 hours to be fluent in a language. Certainly not. That's a lot. 10,000 is a huge amount. 10,000, you'll be very, very advanced. Maybe you need, it depends on the language, but maybe 2,000. But anyway, the app, you're just counting time. It just counts up all the time you spend. And of course, you have to enter every day. Every time I do Japanese, if I do an hour, then I put it in the app. So I'm counting. So now my total Japanese hours, I think it's 25 hours I'm at now. Not so much. <laughs> I probably need, my goal for Japanese is 5,000 hours. I think I'm going to need probably something like that. So only at 25. However, it already, like you said, I'm already, uh, keep, it's keeping my mind fresh, waking me up. It's got me focused. I understand you all learning English much more. And, uh, you know, already I'm learning some, feeling better. I had a little bit of a conversation today. I'm lucky because I'm living in Japan. So I went to the store, I went to a shop today, I bought something for my wife. And uh, the shop uh, person, this uh, girl, was very friendly and uh, very nice, talked to me in very, very easy Japanese. So I was able to, you know, I, not really even a conversation, but just, you know, using like one word, two words. And, but it was, it was communication, right? It was a little bit of communication. Feels really good. I was like, ah, oh, great. And of course, that gave me an extra motivation. Now I'm more excited. I have many more hours to do. But anyway, I recommend for you to do the same thing. Get an app like that. You could get, it's called 10,000 plus or get another app. There's a lot of them that count your habits or count your hours and just count your hours. I like it because it, again, like it's a low stress way to measure your learning, right? Instead of an IELTS score, which is stressful or a TOEFL score, that's stressful, or a grammar test, that's stressful, or grades in a class, stressful. Just measure your time every day because then you know it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. Every day it's going up. Every week it's going up. Every month it's increasing. If you want, you can choose a goal, like I want to reach 1,000 hours by December 31, right? Or our challenge, maybe you choose a, a, a number of hours that you want to do in four months. You know, so you can just multiply, you know, your daily goal by the number of days, right? Like if maybe you say, I'm going to do two, 200 hours per month times four. I'm going to do 800 hours during the challenge, right? And then get an app and then count every day and you'll know and you'll see. And this way, again, you're, you're competing against yourself only, right? You are creating your goal. And yes, yeah, some other people will do more than you probably. Okay, I know other people are going to do more than I am, but it doesn't matter, right? I'm gonna have, I've got my own goal, my own number I want to do in four months. And I have a, now I can count it very easily with this app. So that's what I'm going to do. And if I reach that goal, then I'll feel very good. Uh, can you give us a sentence in Japanese? Watashi no nihongo jonzu dewa arimasen. Well, this is interesting from Prabir. Hi, AJ. I follow you from uh, from two years ago. I've improved a lot, but I realize I speak much better when I speak with strangers. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? But I lose confidence when I interact with regular colleagues. Why does it happen? See, now that's interesting. I, some people, it's the opposite. I think a lot of times it's the opposite situation. Now, obviously, this is a psychological or emotional issue. It's not about language, right? If you can speak well in one situation, and in another situation, you cannot, well, logically, it's not your English that's the problem, right? Because you have it. If you can do it in one situation, it means it's there in your brain. So why in some other situation is it more difficult? So why is because of usually some kind of stress or emotion or pressure that you feel 
with different people or a different situation. So for some reason, Prabir, you obviously must feel more stress or more pressure with your colleagues, your coworkers, and for some reason you feel less stressed, more relaxed with strangers. You know, I don't know, maybe you are worried about your performance with your colleagues because they know you, so you're, huh, you want to do a good job with them, and this creates, you're creating pressure, you're creating stress for yourself, and that actually hurts your speaking ability. On the other hand, I'm guessing, with strangers, you don't care. You don't know them, so you don't care. You don't care if you make mistakes. You don't care about your performance. You relax more. Therefore, you actually speak better. So how? that's why it happens. How do you change it? You've got to find a way to relax with your colleagues. Stop worrying about it. Stop caring about performance. Make mistakes, okay? you got to just learn to relax and have a good time with them. And the, the improvement will happen later. Fernanda says, I'm super motivated because now that I can understand English, I can listen uh, to easy, easily to all audios from you, AJ, and other interesting materials. Not so easy. I am able to read any stuff in English. That's when it becomes fun, right? It's really when it becomes fun, when you can start to read uh, books for native speakers that are not just for students. And when you can listen to movies and TV shows and, uh, I don't know, podcasts and all kinds of cool stuff, then you really can have a good time. Before that, it's more challenging because you need easier materials or the difficult stuff. You know, it takes a lot of effort. So, yeah, Fernanda, enjoy it, man. Have a good time. Have a good time when you reach that level. Yeah, and Fernanda follows up. She says... This has filled my life with satisfaction. English is definitely my second language. I use English in all my technology stuff like cell phones, computers, etc. Great. Awesome. Can you give us a translation of your Japanese sentence? I said my Japanese is not very good. My Japanese, I guess the technically uh no my uh Nihongo Japanese Jozu skilled Dewa arimasen, not. My Japanese is not skillful. <laughs> Which is true. Yeah, okay, so Manuel, follow-up question. What do you recommend? I would like to interact with more English native speakers, but my main issue, this is connected to Provit's problem. My main issue is that I tend to be more reluctant and reserved and therefore not talk. Mm. Me too. <laughs> Although it's strange. You know, it's really weird because I'm more reserved in Spanish. My, you know, I know I haven't done Spanish in four years, but when I was in Spain, it's really strange because uh, with some situations I was less reserved, like less quiet. But a lot of the time, I was kind of nervous about it. Um, and my Spanish is definitely better than Japanese. But with Japanese, um, I feel like I'm less shy already. Only 25 hours. I already feel less shy about it. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm learning Japanese in a natural way. Not. I never had a Japanese class. I never studied Japanese grammar books or textbooks. I've never had to take a test in Japanese. So it's all just independent learning for me. So it's much more relaxed. Like Spanish, you know, I had uh, high school Spanish and university Spanish and all these tests and grades and verb conjugations and all that's in my head still. And I get really like stressed about Spanish. <laughs> So what can you do? You can pay somebody. That helps. If you pay a tutor, you know, like on italki, well, then you're paying them. So you know they're going to be nice to you because um, you're giving them money. So you can do that. And I don't know, do it more. It's kind of like public speaking. Sometimes the answer is just do more of it and then you get more relaxed because you get used to it.
Oh, nice book, MSCTV. I remember I started to read The Moon and Sixpence by Somerset Mom in English. It was difficult, very difficult, but I couldn't stop reading because I got caught up in the plot. Yeah, it's about, it's based on Cezanne, I believe, the painter, Cezanne. Um, he changes the names, you know, but I, I believe it's based on Cezanne. It's an interesting story, very interesting story. It's a good book. I like Somerset Mom. Uh, the Razor's Edge is probably his most famous book, and, and my favorite, The Razor's Edge, is also really good. Hey, speaking of this, by the way, um, let's just, let me quickly just show you our Gab group again. Join, Mar join the Gab group. Follow me on Gab, gab.com. Uh, it'll be on the screen in a minute. Gab.com at AJ Hogue. But what's cool is in our Gab group, people are sharing books and audiobooks. So like, see, uh, Ali Reza says, um, here's my favorite sci-fi writer, Isaac Asimov. That's some good classic sci-fi. I'd like to actually read. He, I, When I was young, I started to read one of his series called the Foundation Series. It's about, it's, I've heard it's really good, but I, I don't know why I stopped reading it when I was young, but I'd like to go back and read it because uh, I've heard it's really good. That's Isaac Asimov. And then we have Heek Monson, who was reading Lord of the Rings and also is reading Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, recommends that. Here's Ernest. They created a Discord group. Join the English-speaking voice club. They have a Discord server so that effortless English fans and members and community, you can all join and you can chat with each other, practice with each other. Maybe you're less nervous talking to other learners instead of native speakers. You might relax more. So that's nice. And Sevka says, is there anyone from Moscow here? But you get the idea. People are sharing uh, their, people are sharing YouTube channels. So people are sharing lots of good ideas for listening and speaking. Here's another one. Pedro sharing several, oh, a course actually on YouTube from uh, an Udemy from Harvard. So you've got, there's a lot of open courses now from some very nice universities on different topics, Yale and Harvard and others. So you get the idea. So join our, v, uh, join our uh, not VIP, join our uh, Gab group, which is free to everybody. Because you're really getting some nice ideas for reading and listening. And it's good for our challenge here. All right, a couple more, then I've got to go. Take care of babies. Yeah, Ruben says, one thing is a good book too. Ruben Rojas, you can focus just in one thing, obviously, in improving your English. There is power in that. That's right. When you really, you, know, you kind of maintain most things in your life, but put a lot of energy into one, usually something new that you need to improve a lot. So I'm doing this now. Of course, I have babies. They're, they're number one. But, you know, like my fitness right now, I'm not pushing my fitness hard because I'm trying to push my Japanese and I'm dealing with two new babies. So I don't have enough time and energy to also make a huge improvement in my fitness level so with my fitness i'm kind of just staying keeping myself about the same level i walk an hour a day to two hours a day carrying some weight like like a baby <laughs> and i'm doing you know body weight exercises pull-ups push-ups a few things like that i'll do that every few days you know maybe every two days sometimes every three days even, but it's enough. It keeps my muscle, it keeps my fitness level about the same, but I'm not training for a super marathon because um, I need the energy and the time to focus on Japanese, which I need a lot of hours for that, and the two new babies, which need <laughs> all my time. So it's a good idea. Focus, pick some one thing or pick two things and focus a lot of energy on them. Abraham Ali says, I'm going to read all of Robert Kiyosaki's books for the EE Challenge. This is a nice idea, too. This is called narrow reading. It's when you pick one writer, one writer, or maybe one topic, and you read a lot of books by the same writer. So, like, for example, Robert Kiyosaki writes about money. So, Abraham Ali is going to read, a, he's got a lot of books. So, read lots and lots of his books. Read all his books. That's a great idea. You'll get a lot of good repetition in there by doing that. You can read the same writer, like uh, that guy, on, uh, I can't remember the name, but on our Gab group mentioned 
Dan Brown. Well, Dan Brown has many books. You could try to read all of Dan Brown's books. Or maybe you prefer Tom Clancy. He writes about military stuff. So you could try to read all or a lot of Tom Clancy's books or Daniel Steele or the Goosebumps books. There are lots of them or the Hardy Boys books. So you pick a series or you pick a writer and try to read everything from them. It's a good idea. It's quite nice. Trong is asking about crypto. I talked about it a little bit. Can you mention something about the crypto field? Do you own any crypto assets like Bitcoin? I do have some Bitcoin. Do you think Bitcoin is doing economic side to force against the matrix? It's very complicated, the crypto. I don't know enough about the details to... I'm not an expert. And there are strong points and weak points with crypto. Of course, uh, each of the cryptocurrencies has their different strong points and different weak points. So, you know, there's Electrum, there's Bitcoin, two of the big famous ones, and there are many, many others. I think it's a little like gambling right now. I would not risk it, a lot of money doing it. Don't risk money that you can't lose. <laughs> I did it kind of more for fun, a little bit. I have some Bitcoin, but I'm not, you know, I'm not risking anything important. So I just say be careful and uh, try to learn from people who know more because I don't know enough to give advice about it. Welcome, Ishmael Mahmoud. Very nice. Okay, Thinzar says... Please give me advice. When I'm speaking English, it's very difficult, more difficult than writing. How do I speak more easily? Okay, well, why is that? Well, because there's no pressure. You can write very, very slowly if you want to, right? You can uh, think about it, mm -hmm, write it, think about the verb, you know, is this past? Uh, you can go very, very, very slowly when you write. So there can be a lot less stress. But when you're speaking, there's pressure, time pressure. You've got to get it out. So you know you're making a lot more mistakes. Some people, that makes them more stressed. How do you solve this? I think the first main thing you need to do is a huge amount of listening. Often, when the writing is easier, it's because you've been reading a lot and maybe doing a lot of textbooks, a lot of school learning. But you're, you don't have so much listening, not, or not enough listening. So I recommend doing some intensive, meaning a large amount, of listening in a short time. Do the challenge. <laughs> Do the challenge. And for you, Thinzar, I would recommend don't focus on reading so much. Focus more on the listening challenge. Try to do the maximum amount of listening every day for four months. This should begin to help your speaking quite a lot. Uh, Chiku is asking, please tell about Lingoda. Should I hire a teacher or not? I don't know what that is. What's Lingoda? Some website? I don't know. Do you need to hire a teacher? No, don't hire a teacher. You don't need that. Do, you just you, you can learn independently. Okay, get you know you can get some courses, but get independent courses that you like. You can try mine or someone else's. You can use podcasts, audiobooks, books, TV, movies. You don't need a uh, a teacher. You don't need a classroom. Bidola asks, where is Gab's comment section? It's more like Twitter. You don't comment, you reply. It's more direct. It's got a little more one-to-one, -one, which is why I like it. So it's not like Facebook where you're going to see comments underneath it. It's more like you see a comment, you see a post, Gab, and then you reply to it, and then the person sees it, and you're going back and forth. So it's a little, think Twitter. It's quite, quite close to Twitter. Mikhail says, such a big amount of serious books, I'll be reading Warcraft and Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is no joke. Lord of the Rings is, uh, that's a, I would say that's a serious book. That Lord of the Rings, the level of English in that is, is high. Tolkien was a very good writer, and he used very nice vocabulary. 
He was a very skillful writer, a uh, very artistic writer. So Lord of the Rings is not easy. Uh, don't, uh, I don't know about Warcraft, but Lord of the Rings is uh, challenging. Mikael, so you're doing very well to read Lord of the Rings. In fact, Lord of the Rings is more difficult than Robert Kiyosaki's books, definitely. It doesn't, you don't have to choose based on difficulty, but I'm just saying, you know, don't, if, if you try to read Lord of the Rings and you think, oh, I, this is hard, well, it is hard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> don't feel bad. <laughs> don't feel bad because Lord of the Rings is not so easy. Okay, Khalifa asking, do you use what you have learned in Japanese in conversation or do you focus on listening and reading? Mostly just listening and reading right now. I don't want to pressure myself. I don't have enough to really talk much. You know, like I'm not going to hire uh, a native speaker right now and try to do that because there's no point. I can't say enough. But but on the other hand, if I have, I just do more like little little small basic phrases with people. You know, thank you. How are you? Uh, like sometimes I, at a coffee shop, the person asks, you know, where do you live? And I'll, oh, I live here in Japan. I say something like, I'm, I'm studying Japanese. You know, I have little, little phrases I can kind of use. So I do that. Just, it's just a way to communicate a little bit. But very quickly, you know, if they, they start speaking more, I'm, uh, I can't, I don't know what they're saying and I, I have to tell them, uh, you know, that's all. <laughs> I can't say anything more. So I'm not focused on it. I need uh, many more months of listening, listening, listening. I'm doing m almost all listening with a little reading. Beardus Befriender recommending that I try using a little more difficult vocab. I will sometimes. That's why I'm doing shows like Aesop's Fables and The Matrix and the movie, I mean, the uh, book club. Because all of those give me an opportunity to talk about and teach a little more difficult vocab. Right? Certainly in the movie, you're learning a lot. Brave New World, occasionally we get some new words there. And uh, Aesop, we always get some. All right, Keizang Dorji says, this is my real situation when I'm at school. To get good grades, I forced myself to work hard, but I failed because of the stress of a stress and no enjoyment. No improvement at last. I learned a lesson now. Yep, that's right, Keizang. You're going to learn. You're going to improve so much more learning independently like you are now, like now. It's so much more enjoyable and much more effective. So you're going to, you're really going to improve a lot now. So don't, it doesn't matter about school. Don't feel bad if you didn't do well in school because, eh, nobody, most people don't learn languages in school. They don't learn them. You know, I, I, I use the example of Japanese people. They take, you know, three years of middle school, four years of high school, that's seven years. And then maybe a couple years in college. So they're up to nine years now. Nine years of English. And they get out after nine years of English in school. And most cannot speak. Um, not Almost not at all. They can't have even regular conversations. They have no confidence at all. So that seems like it's a problem, right? That seems like... Something's wrong. Nine years is a long time. Every, you know, that's 180 hours per year, let's say, 180 hour school year. So let's say they go, you know, one hour a day in class. So something like that, even 150 hours per year. That's, that's a lot of hours total in the classroom learning English with zero result or almost no result or a terrible result. It seems like that's a lot of wasted time, right? It is a lot of wasted time. So the, don't feel bad if you learned English in school and then you got a bad result. Don't feel bad if you got bad grades in English in school. It doesn't matter. 
okay? Because learning as you are now independently, you're the boss now, it's so much faster, so much more effective, and a lot more enjoyable too. So you're, you're fine now. Oh, yeah, Alexi with an interesting point. We'll do this one and one more. Hi, members. I finally caught your live show. By the way, one of the problems with speaking that I used to encounter before, I wasn't used to my voice. It took some time to speak fluently. Right, yeah, it can, it can feel, you know, it feels strange to speak a different language. Your voice may sound strange, and some of it might be just getting comfortable, which takes just a little time. That's all. Okay. Yeah, Abraham says, I chose Robert Kiyosaki because I like his writing style, interested in the topic of money and financial freedom. Exactly. That's how you do it. You choose something that you're interested in, right? Now, he's got a good writing style. It's very conversational. It's a good, clear, direct writing style. And you're going to learn a whole lot of vocab about money. And you're going to get a lot of great ideas, too. So it's, it's an excellent way. Overall, nonfiction is really good to choose. Uh, that, uh, so you can choose you know, any topic. So you can focus on, you could read all of Robert Kiyosaki's books. When you finish those, you know, read other books about financial freedom, about financial independence. And wow, you're going to get so much vocab about business and money and finance. And you're also getting a lot of general English vocab too. It's just a great strategy, Abraham. You're, it's a really good idea. Yeah, like we're going to finish with Taiyaki. Nine years of learning in school is less than nine months of learning in fun ways. Yes, that's right. You will get much better results in nine months learning independently. You are the boss and you're enjoying it. And we're talking about English or really anything. It's better than nine years of school. And I really is better, okay? It's better, like nine months of English learning with effortless English, with independent learning. It's better than nine years of classes in school. It's meaning you'll get better results. You will actually speak better after nine months of doing it this way. It's so much more powerful, which just shows that schools are not very effective. They're not very effective at teaching. And this is, again, why I like homeschooling so much. It's not only language. It's obvious with language. We can see it with language. Why? Because language is actually a skill, right? Language is a skill we can easily see. We can easily judge, right? You can speak or you cannot, or your speaking is good or your speaking is not good. It's obvious. Things like science, it's harder to judge. It's, less, it's more knowledge and less skill. But the same is true. Learning independently, learning at home is more effective than learning at school. That's true for language. It's also true for science. It's true for math, true for history, true for writing, true for reading and literature, true for everything. Independent learning is super powerful. All right, so join the Gab group. And you'll get some great ideas from everybody about what to read, what to listen to, conversation groups to join, all of this, gab.com. Follow me at A-J-H-O-G-E. You need to create a Gab account if you're new. You'll have to create an account, of course. Create your Gab account at gab.com, G-A-B.com. Then follow me at A-J Hogue. On my profile, you'll see a link at the top of my profile, you see a link to our Gab group. Also, you will see a link to the challenge, the listening and reading challenge, if you want to join. 
with the reading and listening challenge, don't, my advice is don't worry about everybody else too much, okay? Don't feel bad if, oh, someone else is doing much more than me or than you, okay? Only one person will get the most. So that can hurt your motivation. If someone's doing, some crazy people are probably going to do 15 hours a day or something, okay? They've got a lot of time. They're crazy motivated, a lot of concentration. Good for them. Good for them. But you maybe don't have that. I can't do 15 hours. I'm too busy with the babies and other things, but I'll try to do a lot. I'm still going to try to do as many hours as I can. A better thing to do is how many hours are you doing right now every day? And then increase every week. Increase a little bit. Increase your daily amount a little bit, right? Today's topic, a little bit. A little bit. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Something like that. Increase every week. So after one week, now my daily listening will be an hour and a half. The next week, now my daily listening will be two hours. And then two and a half. And then three. After four months, it's going to be a big improvement. So do that. Choose an amount to increase every week, every week. And then you're going to feel good about yourself. It doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. Okay? All right, lots of love to you guys. We're, gonna, we're all going to encourage each other during this. We're going to help each other. We're going to motivate each other so that all of us, after four months, make a big improvement and we all enjoy it. Very important that we all enjoy it. All right, well, commit, don't quit. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go now, commit, and don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com.